Okay, so I've dried that now. And uh, so the next step is to put the girl on the front. Um, and so that I keep this, you know, reasonably short um, video. What I've done is I've traced the girly that I've done on another book. Um, and I will just transfer her onto the page there rather than taking ages and ages to draw her. So I'll just line up where I want her to go. And I've already done sort of heavy pencil marking on that side. I place that face down and then I'll take any, you can use anything, I'm using the end of a paint brush. And if you wanted to do this yourself, and you just go over the lines pressing on it so that it transfers the um, the outline of the um, picture that you want. So just go over it here. It um it generally comes out fairly faint, but you can see it, and it's enough to work around. And then what I do is um paint it in. And um, yeah, just take it from there and use a bit of paint, um, maybe use some markers to do a little bit of detail on her dress. Um, may or may not, depending on how I feel at the time, whether I add a face to her or just leave her faceless. Um, I generally leave, well I've only done it four times I think. And generally I've left the face blank, but um, on the writing journal that I made for my friend, I put the face in. And um, she actually turned that quite well. I really liked her with the face on. So I might do that again this time. But it does take quite a while because... Um, I'm no great drawer and um, it just takes a lot of practice to get things just how you want them to look and even then you know you're going to make mistakes that you know there's no such thing as perfection really is there you just get it to where you know you're happy with it that you feel like you've done your best and and as long as you're happy that's fine so, what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. I, I tend to waffle a bit, sorry. <laughs> I lose track of what I'm actually talking about. Just doing her legs now. Okay, I had to change the batteries in the camera. So I've gone over her with um, the end of the paintbrush and the image is transferred reasonably well, if you can see that, maybe. So, what I might do is just go over some of the parts that are slightly missing, just so that I've got a good guideline. That's going to be a bit tricky there, because I've got that dark colour underneath. But should be alright. Most of it came out pretty well. So the next thing I have to decide on is what um, colour I want to do her hair and her um, dress. Um, I think probably I will do her hair and shoes black. Um, <clears throat> might do a dress either yellow or a pale, much pale mauve colour. I think I'm. I need to think about. It. I've just realised I've got to switch off again because I need um, smaller paint brushes, finer paint brushes, and you're sitting on them. So, okay, I'm back again. Um, I was 
just starting to say that I needed to switch off to get the paint brushes from underneath the camera when um, it shut off anyway and the memory card had run out so I had to um, go and empty that card and put it back in and so anyway I've got all my paint brushes <clears throat> those that I like to use out and I've thought about um, what colors I want to use and I thought I might try the dress off in yellow and if it doesn't turn out that I like it that well then I'll um, I'll change it after that but I was thinking to do yellow over the darker stamps underneath um, probably wouldn't work that well so I'm going to have a go at putting some gesso over the top to start with so that the um, the yellow will show through better. <coughs> Choose a paintbrush. So I don't know. It's a bit awkward having it like this because I don't know how much you can see or not see because of my um, angle, my hand being in the way. Um, I eventually like to get some sort of rig that can have the camera sitting overhead so you can look down at what I'm doing because um, there are going to be a lot of occasions where um, I want to do some photos of my painting and and um, canvases and it could be a bit problematic trying to do it at this angle and um, have you be able to see what I'm doing I'm not even sure I know what I'm, I'm not even sure I can see all that well what I'm doing now either it's a weird angle <coughs> Um, see again I've stopped mid sentence and forgotten what I was saying <laughs> oh. okay so just give her dress a basic light gesso And while that dries, I think I'll start doing the skin colour parts. So I've got this, um, which says it's flesh tint, but it's too dark. Much, much, much too dark for my liking. So I have to mix it with a fair bit of white paint to, um, where's my water? Yeah, just to tone it down a bit because um, it's it's kind of an orangey coloured pink, which uh, I know even a lot of the pinks that we do use for skin colour aren't really realistic. And mine, I've got the olive skin, so um, it's not really my colour, is it? Look <laughs> the difference. <laughs> but um, yeah, I like I like to. Um, do a paler, a paler pink than that. Oh, God. Just using this old plate as a as a palette. I had um, look at that. I've lost the, <laughs> the end of the paintbrush, <laughs> and I don't know where it's gone. Crappy crafting 101. Let's try another one. I like a smaller, shorter brush. Not really that good at, um, you know, painting from a long angle. I, I, I don't feel like I've got any control. I have to get right up close. And um, <clears throat> a lot of paint brushes don't really allow you to do that because they've still got a lot of length in the bristle. And 
I can't find it now, but I had a paintbrush where I... Oh, here it is. This is really a dodgy old one that I've left in the water so the paint's come off. I actually cut the bristles shorter. <laughs> Probably not a very artistic thing to do. Butcher your brushes. <laughs> but um, that's how I feel comfortable um, painting in that way. I feel like I have a lot more control over the brush if the bristles aren't too long. It's probably more like the feeling of, you know, when you're writing or, or as, as you wrote as a little kid with a pencil, you know, you get right up really close. Now I'm having to hold it a bit away because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. sort of roughly putting in her face, her face colour. Covered up a few lines of her hair but that's alright because I can go and put them back in afterwards. Do a bit of her neck. Again, if this um, is not what you want to watch, just skip ahead. But this is basically what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be following all the way through with how I create this journal cover from start to finish. I'm trying to think of different ways that I could um, have my camera overhead and um, I don't think that I've come up with a feasible idea yet. So we don't really have anything that we could um, improvise with and hubby's not the um, the handyman type. He's more a computer whiz and is happy to stay indoors and play on his computer and well not that he plays, he, he does work. But um yeah, he's in the past any sort of handyman type jobs that have needed doing just little simple things I've done myself. And, um, oops, gone off the edge. And if you needed anything more sort of delicate than that, put someone else in to do it. Um, leave a space for her. Can you still see me? <laughs> Leaving a space for her shoe strap. Let's do a little bit more of her foot. Camera keeps switching off. Well, running out of um, recording time. Now if I happen to botch any of this painting up because I'm painting at a funny angle I'll go over it off camera and sort of touch it up a little bit if it's really looking too bad. But otherwise it doesn't matter if you go over the lines a little bit. It's all part of the process, creative process, and um, I just have to have a closer look where her thigh goes there. I've lost track of it underneath that rose. Alright, I think it's here. Yeah, I've said before when I was showing the um, writing journal that I did for my friend that the woman that I learnt the, um, or got the idea 
from here's Yoli Bean on YouTube and I'll, I'll put a link to her um, again down in the description box but I got this idea of using the envelope for a journal cover from her and um, she used a Prima Doll stamp and uh, it looks really great um, but I don't have that so I improvised by drawing sort of trying to um, by looking at it and drawing a sort of a, a similarity to a prima doll. I've also done another cover where I did a, um, a different type of girl but the same sort of concept with a little round head with the face not um, drawn in and um, but I gave her a completely different dress than I have done on this one. So now I need a finer paintbrush now. I've got this really tiny one that the darling daughter gave me. It's given me some really fabulous um, arty crafty items for me to use. There's gifts, uh, for birthday and Christmas gifts and that. All my kids have been wonderful in supporting me with doing this kind of stuff. And actually I have our eldest son to thank for um, encouraging me to start doing videos. He, um, He sort of mentioned it a couple of times and I said, ah, oh, what would I do? I don't really, I don't have anything to teach and I don't. I'm still learning myself. But he said, look, um, why don't you just do it anyway just for fun of it and surely some people might be interested. So I did. I'm giving it a go now. So that's sort of, yeah, I've put a flesh tone. It's still a little bit sort of pinky for my liking, but I'll have a look at it a bit later after it dries and see if I might want to do a second coat on it or um, <clears throat> something else. So now I'll go in and do her hair in black. I need to just find that paint up here. It's black. Oops. Try not to tip too many things over. And I'll just have a sip of my tea. Get a bit of a dry throat. When I've been sitting here talking for a little while, not that I'm saying terribly much. Oh. It's gotten very windy again this afternoon. So some of the bushes out the front are blowing back and forth. You might be able to see a bit of shadowing going on but I don't know because the sun's at a different angle now. Maybe not. Hmm. This brush is a bit um, wonky. What's going on? I've got a bit of a loose hair, I think. I'm trying to get it off. Mm. <clears throat> Getting paint all over me. 
bit earlier on I had paint all over my hands and I stopped the camera for some other reason and I had to rush and wash my hands. <laughs> so I've said before I don't like having my hands dirty. It just bothers me. The, it's not so much the look of it, I don't care about how they look, it's the feeling. I don't like the feeling of um, things drying on my skin such as paint and glue and um, dirt if I'm outside doing something in the garden. I don't like that feeling of dirt on my skin or under my fingernails. So anyway, let's think about something to talk to you about. I might just put a touch of water on this. <coughs> um, I don't know what to tell you. I suppose I could... Um, tell you a bit about my health or problems that I have but I don't want to um, start some dirty great big long-winded thing <laughs> it's going to take forever to explain basically I have a, um, a condition where I have lesions in my brain that um, cause me to have bleeding in the brain, brain hemorrhages and they're sort of, they happen at random and um, they give me stroke like symptoms um, and I've had several bleeds over a number of years <coughs> And I'll just look at that there. Don't know where I got up to then. <coughs> um, yeah, I was just talking about that I've had a problem with bleeding in my brain. And um, what happened was one morning I woke up and I was sort of going about my normal day. And all of a sudden I felt a physical sensation like something went bang or pop in the back of my head and um, at the same time I felt very dizzy and nauseous and I had I had the sensation that I was falling over but I wasn't actually so I sat down and, and just thought oh what was that and um, didn't really know and so I just sat and I was waiting for it to pass and um, <clears throat> it didn't actually go away. Um, but I was supposed to be going to a function that day and I thought if I just lay still for a little while uh, it might pass and I'll feel better enough to um, get ready and, and go to that function that was to do with work at the time. I might change that brush to a finer one. Um, and so I lay down for quite a while and then when the time got closer that I needed to be getting dressed and heading out the door, I decided I would have a shower and get dressed and see how I go. Well, I got as far as the bathroom and began vomiting and um, then got in the shower and vomited again and yeah so I was feeling pretty lousy so <clears throat> excuse me I ended up calling in and saying that I wasn't able to make it to the function and you know passed on my apologies 
and um, thought that that was going to be the end of it, that I'd just probably had a bug that, um, you know, if I spent 24 hours resting in bed, I'd probably feel much better and, and um, I'd be right. So, um, 24 hours went by and I was still feeling just as bad. And um, in the end I went down to the doctor, which fortunately was only just down the road a little way. Um, because I felt really lousy and I wasn't really able to walk that well because my balance was off. Um, so I was very, very slow. I made it down to the doctor and um, spoke to her and she said that she suspected that I had, oh, I've forgotten the name for it, but it's um, <clears throat> where you have an imbalance in your inner ear and um, it causes the same sort of symptoms where um, your balance is off <clears throat> and you feel very, very dizzy and... Um, and nauseous and she said look give it two weeks and it should go by then it should pass naturally and so I went home and rested and it didn't go away and um, I went back two weeks later and said look you know I took your advice I rested for two weeks um, it's still there and um, I'm butchering up these shoes <laughs> um, she said, oh, well, you know, and I said, oh, I'm not walking any better either. I'm, pro I'm probably, you know, a bit worse now and staggering, sort of looking a bit like I was drunk. And she said, oh, look, I've seen women with this um, ear problem where um, they're crawling on their hands and knees because their, um, their dizziness and their balance is so bad. So she said, I don't think you actually have it as bad as I've seen it. So you'll be okay. It just takes another little while longer. It might take you three weeks where it takes others two weeks to get over it. So I <clears throat> went back home again. I had to, of course, keep um, calling into work saying, you know, I'm not ready to come back yet. And um, needed to get doctor's certificates for that to um, show that I wasn't well. And um, another week went by and I started noticing that um, on the left side of my body, <coughs> excuse me, I had a, um, a weird sensation like, um, it wasn't pins and needles, but it was a kind of a tingling sensation. Um, and that gradually over a few days um, got stronger and it was down my entire left hand side from my scalp right down to my feet <clears throat> and so I went back to her and told her that and then she said okay it's time to do a brain scan I think or a um, cat scan to have a look at your brain and see if there's something going on something else going on in your head so I then had to go to a different clinic to have that done and um, what they did was they hooked me. I'm missing my fingers. <laughs> I can't stand the paint. <laughs> now I need to focus on what I'm doing because I'll get distracted. There's the end of that brush I lost before. <laughs> Keep doing this. So I'm getting distracted by what I'm talking about and not focusing. I'm going to have a go at doing the yellow on her dress. Whoops, too much again. Uh, so yeah, I went and had the CAT scan and the um, technician there, because um, I'd never had one done before so I didn't know what to expect and he was really great, he explained to me, you know, we need you to lie down and on this little, you know, bed thing and have your head put inside this donut shaped thing and um, he said what we also need to do is give you a contrast dye that will um, 
enable us to see inside your brain a bit better. Well, of course, I didn't understand at the time, but I know now know that that's so they can see it, the finer blood vessels inside your brain. So you can still see the flower coming through here. Maybe that doesn't look too bad after all. Um, so yeah, he went behind the um, little room with the window and did what he had to do with the machines and then he came out and pulled me out of the machine and put this, injected this dye into my arm and um, then went back and did the next part of the, I'll make sure I'm not messing this up, yeah, um, did the next part of the test and then came back and said okay you're all done but the difference in his um, bedside manner I suppose you could say after having put the dye in and seen further into my brain his attitude changed to one of very kind very compassionate and it kind of put, kind of put me on edge a little bit because I'm thinking, why is he suddenly being super nice to me? <laughs> and has he seen something really bad, you know? So kind of, my mind tends to wander a bit like that and worry about things. So anyway, um, I felt really lousy after that. So I went back home, went to bed. And later on, the results were supposed to go to the doctor um, the next day. Um, so I was prepared to, you know, I'd have to go back to the doctor and get the results the next day and um, was expecting them to ring me and say, you know, the results are in, come and see us. Well, later that evening there was a knock at the door and there was my doctor and um, I actually had two doctors I saw at that clinic, a, a woman and a man and it was the the male doctor who came to the door and said very kindly and compassionately we found some um, lesions in your brain and we need for you to be seen by a neurologist and I've called an ambulance and you're going to hospital. Wow, that was pretty scary. Um, the main thing I was really concerned about was our poor daughter. She was eight, I think, at the time, and um, very close to me, always has been. Um, and that must have really scared her. You know, all of a sudden, mummy's whisked off to hospital and she didn't know what was going on. Mind you, neither did I. Anyway, um, I was in hospital for two weeks before they were able to determine exactly what I had and even then they were a bit nonplussed because they didn't know what to do. Um, but as it turned out I was diagnosed with a condition called cavernous angioma which is lesions and you can have them in the brain and in the spinal cord and uh, what they are are very abnormal blood vessels that um, form a cluster in the shape that is um, very similar to um, a raspberry and um, I have um, more than one I have um, several and um, but the one that's been giving me the most problem is um, one that I have in the brain stem and um, that's a very very delicate area and can affect you in a lot of ways um, you know if you, if you get something like that or in particular with me it's that the lesions bleed very easily because the blood vessels are abnormal and the walls of the blood vessels are very very thin 
and they bleed um, very easily so of course any um, blood that's in that very tight space of the brain stem can cause um, quite significant um, what's the word De uh, deficits yeah so yeah I've I was diagnosed in 1999 and I've been living with it since then I've since um, had several strokes from it and spent some time in hospital um, the first time that I was in there when I was diagnosed I was there for three months and I had to um, recover from that and um, learn how to walk again and learn how to do a lot of things again but um, it was a long long road to recovery but I did um, regain quite a lot back but I have been left with left-sided um, altered sensation in my left side and um, quite a bit of um, pain um, that goes along with that so my brain I now have what's called central pain syndrome which uh, is that that part of your nervous system that part of your brain that operates the nervous system is damaged and can't be repaired um, and it's therefore receiving signals that aren't actually there that I'm that I'm in pain. So um, I might try that smaller brush. Where did I put it? Yes, yeah, so I have a constant um, ice cold burning pain down my left side. Um, that oddly enough is um, made worse by cold weather or touching anything cold, in particular cold metal um, and even cold water is very painful on my left side but um, yeah heat does help so I try to stay as warm as I can in winter which is now so I've got the heat going quite high um, too high for hubby so he's down the other end hibernating in the cooler air and I'm hibernating in here yeah I'm just making her face a little paler I didn't like it that quite that dark but I might change my mind I changed my mind several times about the colouring and I make it a bit darker, a bit lighter and just see how it looks when it's done and whether I like it or not, whether I'll change it again. So yeah, that's, um, I'm on a um, disability pension. I still have trouble walking. I use a cane and uh, my balance is still quite off. I um, get around the house okay by sort of hanging onto the furniture and the walls but um, I do need my cane outside and I actually use two sticks when I'm outside in the garden particularly with the dogs because they um, they can kind of knock me if sometimes and I have actually had, have fallen over a few times so yeah just have to be extra cautious but, um, yeah, I don't want to go on and on. I mean, just explaining to you what my condition is, you know. The thing is, I could be a lot worse than I am, and I'm grateful that I'm not. And, um, you know, having spent a lot of time in and out of hospital, I... Um, have a great appreciation for the fact that there's always somebody worse off than yourself always and um, you know just keep that in mind when you're sort of feeling as if you're a bit too precious and <laughs> feeling sorry for yourself although 
I must say that I do think there is a place for um, back on again there is a um, place for expressing your feelings and um, you know letting letting it out because you, you know we all go through times of frustration and you know a bit of despair about things and you sort of have a have a bit of a cry and have a bit of a talk about it and then um, you know don't dwell on it for too long but don't deny yourself the fact that you know okay you are in pain you are hurting you are upset about something you know, let yourself what, what do you Americans call it a pity party <laughs> let yourself have a bit of a pity party every now and then when if you need to but yeah don't drag it on for months on end <laughs> This isn't that perfect, but it's not too bad either. So I might have to leave it there, and because um, it's getting a bit later in the day now, and I have other things to do. And this video is going to be so very long. So I'll leave her there now, let her dry, and I will come back tomorrow and finish off some more of the details and uh, then it should be finished of that part of the cover. Alright, so I'm going to clean up my mess now and thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with me. If you've stayed with me this far, good on you. <laughs> Alright then, bye for now. I'll just show you her up close. Alright, where are we going now? Bye.